During the project or during the project planning, we will allocate resources to different activities. And the moment we have the Gantt chart, we see where those activities are planned and also when the people who are working on these activities are active. Now, what can happen is that some activities are in fact overlapping and that one person is dealing with more than one activity at the same time. Let's have a look at this table here. We have in fact our friend Harry Potter, our project uh, colleague, and Harry is working on activity A for 75%, activity C for 30%, F for 40%, G for 70 and for H also 70%. We put those data in the sheet, in the Gantt chart, and we see those A75, C30%, F40%, G70, and H also 70%. Now what we have to do now is to look at the different activities and we have to see what is the allocation of Harry Potter, for example, in the first period. And we see it's 105%, 105 which is more than 100%, that's why I put it in red. The next period that Harry is working is period 2, but we only have 30%, which is okay, there is no problem. We continue and we see here again in activity or period 5, we have 110%, here also 110%, and here we have 70 and 70 now we have problems here and here. Now what can we do? Now we are lucky in this case here. We have uh, activity A and C which have slack. So these are not critical path activities. And what I can do, I can move activity A, for example here. When I move activity A to period 3, I see that we don't have a problem anymore. That's one possibility what we can do with activity A. Uh, another thing we can do is we can expand activity A. So we have 75% that Harry is working on activity A when we have one period. When we extend that activity, for example, to three periods, we have 25, 25 and 25. And then we don't have a problem here anymore. We can do the same thing here. We can expand this C over three periods instead of two periods, which would bring the activity of Harry Potter from 30 to 20%. So here we have a lot of different possibilities that we can use to resolve the resource problem. Here we have a similar problem. We have G and H which are in fact on the critical path. It gives us a problem, but we are lucky with activity F. Activity F here has two periods, but a slack of two periods too. So when I double the duration of activity F, we see that this becomes 20, 20, 20 and 20%. 20 Basically, we go here from 110 to 90. Now we go here to 90, for example. We go here to 90, we also go here to 90, and here to 90%. So in this case, we are quite lucky because we can resolve the resource problem just looking at the table and we can say, okay, we can use the slack. In this case, we call this leveling. In case we cannot use the slack, we may have to go, excuse me, I made an error, I, we call it smoothing. We call it smoothing because we can use the slack and the duration of the, act, uh, of the project did not change. On the other hand, when we cannot resolve the problem using the slack, the duration of the pro project will probably increase or will increase and in that case we will call it leveling. So these are the ways to deal with the resources issues and that's of course something that has to be done. We cannot use the resources more than we have them allocated to our project 
and overtime is also not so good, certainly not during the planning period. During execution it may be a means to an end. This is very important to understand and it can become quite complex when you look at complex projects. Of course, project management software is there and a lot of the software can help you resolve these problems. This was the part about resources, allocation and resolving of resource problems. Looking forward to seeing you in the next presentation. Thank you and bye-bye.